Lucille Ball. Co-starring Gail Gordon. Mrs. Winkler, I'm not the type of man to high-pressure anyone into making a hasty decision, but I'm sure you'd be more than satisfied if you give our bank a chance to handle your late husband's estate. Well, I appreciate your interest, Mr. Mooney, but I think I'd like a little longer to think it over. Of course. <laughs> and now I must be getting back to Pasadena. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, Mrs. Winkler, our bank offers more than just business relationships. Uh, with us, you would be treated as a friend and a member of the family. Well, I must say, Mr. Mooney, I like the way you make a person feel so so sheltered and protected. <laughs> ah, well, that's our policy, you see. Mr. Mooney! Yes? Oh, Mrs. Mooney, I, I, I are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm you, all right. Oh, right. Oh, I apologize for my secretary. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Please forgive me. Oh, my heart is still pounding the way you sailed across that desk. <laughs> I rather enjoy a little action once in a while. <laughs> I'm so tired of having Boy Scouts always trying to take me across the street. <laughs> good day, Mr. Mooney. Oh, good, good day, uh, Mrs. Wink. Oh, uh, it's so nice of you to take it that way, really. Thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. Carmichael, do you realize Mrs. Winkler is a very important potential client? Well, yes, Mr. Mooney. I said it was an accident. I, I just turned like... Oh. <laughs> what are you doing with all that junk, anyway? Did you come here to work or to try out for the Olympics? No, oh, sir. The girls here at the office loaned me all this stuff to lay, take to Lake Arrowhead tomorrow. Oh, yes. I almost forgot. Tomorrow is my vacation. You mean my vacation? <laughs> when you're not here, it's my vacation. <laughs> Who's winning? <laughs> Well, I, I was just getting a little practice. <laughs> the personnel office sent me over to see Mr. Mooney's secretary. Oh, well, that's me. I'm Lucy Carmichael. Hi, I'm Audrey Fields. I'm going to be replacing you on your vacation. Oh, 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 fine, fine. Well, Mr. Mooney just stepped out, and I'll be glad to introduce you to him when he comes back. Won't you just sit down? Well, maybe while we're waiting, you'd show me around and tell me what my duties are. Oh, well, it's just the usual secretarial work, you know, answering the phone and typing letters and filing and things like that. And if I can do it, anybody can. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me about Mr. Mooney. Just, uh, what kind of a boss is your employer? Well, let me put it this way. He's more boss than employer. He yells a lot. Uh-oh, one of those, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm sure that a man like that can be handled with tact and diplomacy. Oh, well, that's just the way I handle, Mr. Mooney. I have found that the best tact and diplomacy is just yell right back at him. Peter's coming! What do you want? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what I want. You're supposed to put addresses on letters before you take them to the mail room. Yes, sir. I'll be glad to help. Uh, uh, who's this? Oh, uh, that's Miss Audrey Fields. She's uh, going to replace me during my vacation. Oh, how do you do? How do you do, Mr. Mooney? Please, sit down, sit down. Thank you. Well, tell me, Miss Fields, have you had much experience in this sort of work? Oh, yes, sir. My last position was as private secretary to the president of the North Atlantic Trust Company. Oh, private secretary to the president? Well, yes. you must have been with the company for quite some time. No, not really. Actually, when I started, the situation was rather similar to this one. I replaced a girl who went on her vacation, and Mr. Grant was so pleased with my work that he kept me on. Oh, yes. And by the time she got back, 
back. I had assumed so many of her responsibilities that they made her my secretary. <laughs> my, isn't that interesting? Yes, very. <laughs> well, now, it will be a pleasure having someone with your experience around here to help us. <laughs> you know, Mr. Mooney, you remind me somewhat of Mr. Grant. Oh, I do? Uh-huh. Of course, he's a bit older. How old is he? At least 40. Oh! <laughs> you know, Mr. Mooney, now that I see how young and attractive you really are, I'm really sort of surprised that this office is furnished so, um, conservatively. Uh, uh, conservatively? Oh, yes, Mr. Mooney. Now, for instance, these drapes. They're really terribly ordinary. Mm -hmm. Today, people are going in for fun patterns and lamps um, with a message. Lamps with a message? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now, let me see. The rug looks like it's in good shape. Oh. Maybe shampooing it would bring it back to life. It is a little dead, isn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> and I think that we should move my desk just a little closer to yours, uh -huh. and then we'd still have plenty of room here in the middle for a nice and formal arrangement, something cozy and warm, huh? How about a love seat with an incense burner? <laughs> uh, hardly. <laughs> well, uh, I like your suggestions very much, Miss Fields, very much indeed. Uh, Mrs. Carmichael. Yes, sir. Before you go to lunch, will you get in touch with an interior decorator? Yes, sir. Make sure we get someone very avant-garde and modern. Oui, madame. <laughs> and get someone up here to shampoo this rug and bring it back to life. Yes, sir. There's nothing worse than a dead rug. <laughs> Oh, and if anyone calls, I'll be out to lunch. Yes, sir. Now, there's one more thing. Yes, sir. Are you interested in lunch, Miss Fields? With you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> for you from the studio. All very high fashion. And look, honey, this is the wig Audrey Hepburn wore in the picture we saw. You know, some nights you can be a brunette just for kicks. Well, Mary Jane, I appreciate all the trouble that you went to, but I just think I should call Lake Arrowhead and cancel my reservation. Oh, Lucy, all year long you've looked forward to this trip. Now, don't blow it just because some girl's taking your place at the office. That's just it, taking my place. She's the type that could con Mr. Mooney into making my vacation permanent. <laughs> Mr. Mooney wouldn't allow a thing like that. <laughs> I know you two have your differences, but Mr. Mooney's loyal. If he wasn't, he'd have hired a good secretary a long time ago. <laughs> well, you're a big help. Well, anyway, she's more than just a secretary. She's one of those tricky chicks. You know what she is? What? She's a one-woman Peyton place. <laughs> oh, you make her sound like a real femme fatale. Yeah. What does she look like? Oh, nothing special. She's about the same age as me when I was younger. <laughs> She's attractive, but not beautiful. Her figure's okay, but not wow, you know. Well, so what are you worried about? She's just a girl. I know, but she's so good at it. <laughs> but, honey, Mr. Mooney's not going to be taken in by someone like that. He's a respectable married man. He's also at the dangerous age. He's past the dangerous age. That's worse. Men go from dangerous to desperate. <laughs> Letting your imagination run wild. Now, why don't you go up to Lake Arrowhead and stop worrying about your job? Look, I'm not just worrying about my job. I don't want to see Mr. Mooney led astray by some designing woman. Is there anything you can do about it? Well, I can stay around where I can keep an eye on them and see they don't get too cozy. Lucy, you're supposed to be on a vacation. You can't be seen hanging around the bank. Well, now they don't have to know it's me that's hanging around the bank. Lucy, no, not another one of your kooky papers. Well, all I know is I just 
got to protect poor Mr. Mooney from that, that menace. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, new paragraph. Confidentially, I think my approach to landing the Winkler account is far superior to Mr. Cheever's old-fashioned fuddy-duddy way. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, where did these flowers come from? Oh, I brought them. I thought they'd make your office just a little more cheerful. Uh, our office? <laughs> Oh, they smell lovely. I was hoping their fragrance would help overcome the aroma of Mrs. Carmichael's perfume that seems to linger on. Oh, oh. is that her perfume? Hmm, I thought that was insecticide. Good morning, Mr. Moody's office. Oh, the interior decorator is here. Good, good, good. Send the decorator in, please. <sighs> I just know you're going to love all the ideas I have for your office. Uh, 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 our office. Uh, Remember. <laughs> Ciao. She has a mad, mad, mad exterior, too, if you ask me. Uh, won't you come in? Thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, Mr. Mooney's secretary. Oh, you must be that lovely Mrs. Carmichael I spoke to on the phone. <laughs> No, Mrs. Carmichael is on vacation. I'm taking her place. Oh, oh. Uh, Mr. Mooney, Mrs. Carmichael sure thinks the world of you. Yeah, she says you were so kind and considerate and so loyal. And oh, by the way, how's Mrs. Mooney? Uh, well, well, we are fine. I'm glad to hear that. Would you mind if we got on with the decorating? Why not? <laughs> we should have some very bold masculine drapes. Mm. A pattern that would reflect Mr. Mooney's personality. <laughs> Maybe something in an animal motif. <laughs> How about something with a stripe down its back? <laughs> yeah, stripes. Stripes are very in this season. Yeah, they're way in. Yeah. <laughs> and over there... Where? There, we thought that we should have a very important painting. Like what? Something that art lovers can communicate with. No. Well, if it's communication you want, how about a Salvador Dali? Then when anyone comes through the door, they can say, Hello, Dali. <laughs> That's communication. <laughs> Yes, well, we'll think about that. No. Now, over here, I would suggest that we put a nice, cozy little bar. A bar? Oh, yes, Mr. Mooney. Nowadays, more deals are made over a bar than over a desk. Oh, uh, true, true. I'd like the bar to be made out of something unusual. Like what? Well, now, what do you have in distressed wood? <laughs> Well, we have some walnut that looks a little worried. <laughs> well, maybe you prefer a melancholy mahogany. <laughs> or if you want something really distressed, we have some pecky cypress that's on the verge of suicide. <laughs> uh, I know what I'd like. What? Maple. Oh, maple, good. With a beautiful blonde finish to go with your hair. Oh, aren't you sweet? <laughs> and maybe a black base to go with the root. <clears throat> well, um, if you ladies have settled your decorating problems, we have to get back to work. Oh, well, don't let me interrupt. You two just go ahead like I wasn't even here. I'll just take a few measurements. Oh, fine, fine. Now, well, now let's get on with our correspondence. Uh, would you read me the last paragraph of that memo I dictated? 
Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, confidentially, Mr. Cavanaugh, I think my approach to landing the Winkler account is superior to Mr. Cheever's old-fashioned fuddy-duddy way. Fine, fine, fine. Now, that memo goes to Mr. Cavanaugh, and be sure that this one goes to Mr. Cheever. And don't get them mixed up, because if you do, I am in terrible trouble. Oh, I'll be very careful, Mr. Mooney. Perhaps Mrs. Carmichael could make that mistake, but I never could. <laughs> One more thing. <clears throat> Are you interested in lunch, Miss Field? With you? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Mrs. Carr could make that mistake, but I never could. <laughs> The stock that you mention will be acceptable as collateral for the loan that you are requesting. However, if the loan will not... <laughs> My name is Jose Hernandez. <laughs> Apparently, you're here to shampoo the rug. Apparently, I come to shampoo the rug. <laughs> Wouldn't Mrs. Carmichael send someone over here to shampoo the rug when we have important work to do? Now, she is a real bird brain. <laughs> you make arrangements to come back later this evening? Uh, no, I cannot work at night. At night, I have to see Esther. <laughs> Don't you take your siesta in the afternoon? No, Esther, my girl. Tonight, I have to see Esther. <laughs> oh, really? Shampooing the rug while we are working. What a bother. Oh, you don't bother me, senor. I was referring to you. Oh, well, God, 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 God. Oh. Yes, Mr. Cheever, yes, sir. What about it, sir? Well, in it, you criticize my handling of the Winkler account. And you also refer to me as an old fuddy duddy Oh, well, sir. Uh, uh, my secretary must have made a mistake in transcribing a note. I have never thought of you as a fuddy. Or even a duddy. <laughs> I said, was that you are a, a ready Freddy. <laughs> uh, listen, ready Freddy, you had better get ready to find yourself another job with another funny duddy. If we don't land that Winkler account, uh, yes, sir. Sir. this is a bank, not a laundry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Mooney. Mrs. Winkler still doesn't answer. Oh, well, keep trying, keep trying. If she takes her account to a rival bank, I'll be looking for another job. Oh, I don't know. I'll... Good morning, Mr. Mooney. <laughs> trying to get you on the phone all morning. Well, have you really? <laughs> well, I was visiting some 
friends at Lake Arrowhead. <laughs> oh, and while I was there, I ran into that adorable secretary of yours, Mrs. Carmichael. What a dear, dear girl. <laughs> oh, well, that's very generous of you to say that after the way she sprawled you across this desk. Oh, nothing of it. She's just a spirited young thing. I was the same way when I was younger. <laughs> my, my. This office seems so dead and empty without her. Oh, my, you are fond of her. Well, she's my kind of people. <laughs> I like doing business with my kind of people. Doing business? Yes. Yeah. Well, now, I can arrange to have the papers all drawn up for your signature tomorrow. Oh, well, Mrs. Carmichael, be back tomorrow. Oh, I'm afraid not. Oh, well, why don't you have Mrs. Carmichael call me when she gets back from her vacation? And we'll settle things then. Oh, whatever you say, Mrs. Winchester. Whatever you say, of course. <laughs> She certainly is eccentric. Well, she'd have to be to be so fond of Mrs. Carmichael. <laughs> oh, she's also very forgetful. Here's her handkerchief. Now, I wonder why she insists on Mrs. Carmichael being here before she'll do business with us. Now, she went to Arrowhead... Arrowhead, and she... I am beginning to smell a rat. I am beginning to smell the rat's perfume. Now look at these initials, L.C. Lucille Carmichael. Now what in the world could she be up to? Why, she's here to spy on us. Well, why would she want to do a thing like that? She's jealous of me. Jealous? Well, as a woman, she's aware of the great admiration that I have for you, Mr. Mooney. Now, what was it you said they used to call you in college? Speedy. <laughs> before we discovered your initials. Hey, could you put... Are you talking about... Oh, don't give me that. Come on. Congratulations. Yeah! She wants you to handle her account personally. She says you're the independent, no-nonsense type. She likes your spirit. Says you remind her of her late husband. Splendid, my boy. Splendid! Mr. Mooney? Hello. See, I'm lucky for you. Well, it's lucky for you that things turned out the way they did. <laughs> Where are you going, Miss Fields? To Arrowhead. I've had enough of this kooky joint. Speedy. <laughs> If, uh, if you're stuck for a secretary, Mr. Mooney, I, I can take my vacation some other time. That is, if you still want me to work for you. Well, there's one thing I have to get settled first. What's that, sir? Are you interested in lunch, Mrs. Carmichael? With you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 